start with the <coughs> object uh, kinematics. So, uh, today we will see how to uh, study the kinematics and the statics of the grasp. So, we start with the object. The object is a rigid body. I draw it like this uh, sort of circle. So, a rigid body has uh, in the space six degrees of freedom. And uh, then we need uh, six parameters to identify its uh, configuration in space. Uh, yesterday you see that this uh, configuration can be uh, described by a frame that we can call B, whose origin is uh, in the point whose coordinates are P. P coordinates are expressed with a base reference frame that we call N. Okay, uh, since this uh, rigid body has uh, six degrees of freedom, we can describe its uh, uh, velocity uh, with using six parameters. In particular, we can define the uh, twist of the object, nu, that is defined the linear velocity of the point P and the angular velocity omega. So this twist is a vector with six dimensions. Oh, sorry, I'm writing really <laughs> bad. I can do better. Six. Okay. Uh, this means that we can uh, relate the twist of, at each uh, point of this object using these uh, six parameters. For example, if we have a point here that is a contact point, a point in which the hand is touching the object, I call it CI, I can relate the twist expressed in CI uh, as a function of the twist nu. So, uh, for example, the velocity of the point CI <laughs> I, have, I need <laughs> a little training uh, I on the object expressed with respect to N reference frame can be evaluated according to the fundamental rigid body relationship as the velocity of point P plus the cross product between the angular velocity and the distance Ci minus P. Okay, this is a standard uh, relation in physics and mechanics. Okay, uh, since uh, it's convenient for us to work uh, with uh, matrices. A convenient way to express the cross product is by means of uh, the skew matrix. So for example, if we have to evaluate the cross product a, a vector B, I can evaluate this cross product as the product between a matrix S uh, evaluated as a function of vector A multiplied by B. So we can express the cross product as the product between a matrix and a vector. This matrix S is, defi is defined as 0 minus a, a z a y a z 0 minus a x a y minus a x zero. So it is a skew uh, matrix. It is anti symmetric. So 
I have that S the A transpose is equal to minus S A that is equal to S D minus A. This is a simple uh, property of this Q matrix. So using this uh, notation we can uh, write that uh, the velocity of point I on the object expressed in N is equal to P dot uh, minus S C I minus P multiplied by omega. So I can express this as an identity matrix 3 by 3 minus the skew ci minus p so this matrix multiplied by p dot and omega yeah. and uh, okay finally i minus s ci minus p for the twist. <laughs> but it's this, okay. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, if I want to evaluate the twist at the contact point, I need also to evaluate the, the angular velocity at the contact point. Since uh, the object is rigid and since uh, the angular velocity is a property of the rigid motion and not uh, a property of, the, of a point, I can write simply that omega i on the object expressed with respect to n is simply omega. So it's equal to the 0 i multiplied by so I can yeah, collect these two equations in a single equation in which I express the twist at the contact i on the object with respect to n as the product of a matrix pi transpose multiplied by the twist n where the I matrix is defined as um, I zero S C I minus P I and so it's a matrix six by six. Uh, why I introduced the transpose here? Uh, no, uh, the minus is not here because here I would transpose so the transpose of the skew is minus the uh, skew itself so this is why the, the minus here disappears and uh, okay uh, why I put a transpose here because uh, this will be clear later when we will talk about uh, statics because uh, uh, this is a matrix that we use to define the grasp matrix that uh, following the kinematics approach we actually define its transpose so we <laughs> it's a bit complicated but here we have to need to define first the, um, the transpose of P Okay. Yeah, uh, the twist, the contact here is defined uh, with respect to the reference frame N. But when uh, we will define the contact models, we will see that it's more convenient to use, uh, to express this uh, twist with respect to uh, another reference frame. This reference frame is the contact reference frame. So I uh, draw here 
a part of the object, surface, let's do something like this. Here we have the contact, so we can we have a tangent tangent direction, a tangent plane, and the normal direction. So this is the point C i and uh, we can define another reference frame C i with capital letter whose uh, x axis is the normal and i and whose uh, uh, other directions are uh, the uh, are two vectors on the tangent plane so for example this one and this one so we can define another reference frame C i whose uh, axes are defined by three uh, unit vector and i that is normal to the contact surface T i is uh, on the tangent plane and O i is uh, also on uh, the tangent plane orthogonal to T i. If we uh, put this, the components of these three unitary vectors sorry, in a matrix, we obtain a rotation matrix that defines the orientation of CI reference frame with respect to um, N reference frame. What we need to do is to express the twist at the contact on the object that we know uh, with respect to N. We want to express it with respect to the uh, CI reference frame. This is because it's more convenient when we will define the contact models. So we need to define the contact, the twist with respect to CI. Uh, for convenience, uh, I will avoid the, the index I above in the following because otherwise I <laughs> a much a uh, lot of time in writing indexes so <laughs> I reduce a little bit so uh, if I consider for example the velocity I know that the velocity expressed with respect to n is given by the rotation matrix Ri multiplied by the velocity expressed with respect to i or the same point. So, uh, recalling that the rotation matrix is uh, an orthogonal matrix, so we have that the product between Ri and Ri transpose is the identity, so that the inverse of the rotation is simply the transpose, we can evaluate that the velocity expressed with respect to the contact reference frame is given by the transpose of the rotation matrix multiplied by the velocity expressed with respect to n. Uh, the same uh, can be done for the angular velocity, so omega i is equal to r i transpose omega i expressed with respect to n. So we can express the twist at the i contact point on the object as a matrix Ri with this symbol multiplied by the twist 
expressed with respect to n, where this matrix Ri uh, transpose sorry is a six by six matrix uh, that is simply this matrix. Okay, and uh, yeah. So uh, finally, we have the, the twist <coughs> can be expressed as R i transpose p i transpose multiplied by the twist <laughs> of the object. Okay, I can call this. G i tilde transpose and then finally I have that okay I can do uh, this type of uh, evaluation for each of the contact points that I have between my hand and the object so I can uh, collect all the twists in a unique vector, unique vector C, uh, no, C object, that is one object, so it's a big vector with all the twists of the contact point, so this is a six by is a vector with six uh, NC elements where NC is the number of contact points. So if I have uh, three contact points in my grasp, this vector will be 18. Uh, if I have uh, 424, etc. Okay, so I can write this relation for each of the contacts so I can obtain the end a relation nu C of equal to G tilde where G tilde is G1, uh, I missed transpose here, sorry, here, here, see. So the transpose <coughs> of this matrix is uh, obtained, is, there is a tilde also here, by putting together the transpose of all GI matrices. So G tilde transpose is a 6 and C by 6 matrix. And this is an important, the first of the important uh, matrices that we will see today, and is uh, called, it's transpose, is the transpose of the complete grasp matrix.